hey, all systems are go on this end. Okay. We so we might as well no? call, call the session to order. Oh. Well, And we do have uh, somebody from as a from the public, and if there's if he's open to make any comments or any statements before we start. Okay. Yes. I will speak slowly. Um, everybody remembers Snowtober. <laughs> Snowtober. I heard you right, correct? Yes. Okay. I was in a Smith Vocational School during Snowtober. And I wanted to um, remind by each one of you um, about the Red Cross was staffing the Smith Vocational School and um, we had, I was there four days with the MRC and Medical Reserve Corps and EMT, I'm an EMT. Um, a number of people entered the, evacuated their homes and entered the uh, Smith Oak School. They didn't have their prescriptions. I was concerned. Fortunately, Cooley Dick at a pharmacy, a pharmacist on duty, and pinched in their prescriptions. Now, the Red Cross has been willing to show up at the senior center for a go kit information on a go kit, whether uh, people have to evacuate their homes and um, what they should take with them in person. Okay, they showed up in person. And I would like to see that here again. So, um, I hope you invite the Red Cross um, to come back again. Okay. Number two. We used to have a computer tech. I know enough about computers to get me in trouble. And I would like to see a computer tech again on a regular basis. Um, the third thing, during Penny Shaughnessy's directorship, which was initially in this building. Um, she invited the fire department, Northampton Fire Department, to come and do a demonstration on fire extinguishers. Um, talk about fire extinguishers in the home and potential fire 
uh, scenarios uh, in the home and uh, practice. They set up a half a gallon uh, or uh, half a 55 gallon uh, in the parking lot. Diesel fuel and people, myself, lined up and they provided the fire extinguishers and taught us how to put out a fire. Cooking, smoking, and candles are the major uh, cause of fires. And uh, so I'd like to see that program again in the spring. Okay. What is the situation for the senior van? We can't they can only put that on an agenda. Huh? We can we can't have a we can't we can't have a conversation with you. It's like against the law. Oh really? <laughs> it has to be on agenda yeah. item. Yeah. I wanna remind you to solve the senior man <laughs> problem. Okay. <laughs> so we'll leave it at there. It's kind of, it's like Jeopardy, you just have to rephrase the question, you know. <laughs> <laughs> What's the update on the senior man? Or can you tell me about that? We can't. Yeah. Okay. So, Bob, I don't know if it makes sense to come from you, but just to talk a little bit about the public forum and, and the, the, the details around response and what the next step would be. Yeah, uh, you know, from the public forum, they're, they're basically can come in, state what they like to have happen either in the future or for the next meeting. But uh, it, it, there's nothing that uh, has an open discussion. Okay. So we can't go over anything that you've asked, but we can put it on either uh, the minutes. It will be in the minutes of the next meeting. And if we have any time to go over each one of the items, uh, we can address that in the meet, uh, minutes and uh, maybe have a, a statement the following month. But at this point, all we can do is take your questions, record them, and then move on with the meeting. I'd like to see the senior van back in operation. And we'll leave it at that. Okay. Okay. Yep. Is that complete? You all, are you all set, Bruce, on your questions? Yes. I would okay. Be. Thank you. And waiting for it. You, you can stay for the rest of the meeting if you want, Bruce, okay. or you can leave. You don't have to disappear. Okay. But you do have to be quiet and not participate any further. My lips okay. are <laughs> Okay, uh, let's move on to the minutes from uh, September 15th. Has everybody had a chance to go through them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If so, then we uh, do we have a motion to approve them as they are? So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. So moved. Okay, so at that point, we can move over to the director's report. Kim, you're on. I am on. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening, good evening. Good evening. Everybody online can hear me okay? Yep. All right. Perfect. Um, okay. A uh, couple updates, a uh, couple new information. I uh, want to start off again with the team. Fabulous team here. I'm working hard each and every day. It's such an honor to be a part of the team. Um, as I mentioned last time, we are recruiting for an assistant director. Uh, we've been through a first round of interviews, and that's the update I can give you at the moment. Um, I will keep you updated on that process as we move forward. Um, in terms of volunteers, we have, again, a wonderful group of volunteers. We are also looking to expand the number of volunteers that we have in. So again, just kind of a call to do that. Um, gradually kind of increasing our volunteer team, whether it be coffee shop, bistro, 
Um, we would like to, in the not too distant future, get the coffee shop open an additional day. Um, right now it's Mondays and Wednesdays. We'd like to open that up an additional day in the not too distant future, so we'll need some volunteers for that too. Um, eventually the goal would be to have that open five days a week as it's been in the past, but again, we'll kind of stay, take that a step at a time and make that gradual. Um, a couple updates around the building. I uh, brought some of this up last month, but want to want to touch on a couple of, of these items again. Um, number one, the temperature in the building. We are officially, as of this week, switched over to heat. <laughs> so we went through the time in the summer where things were hot, and then we went through a few days where things were a little chilly because the temperature dropped, and that was before we were able to switch over to heat. So. The challenge in our building, of course, is that it's just not a switch that we can put on heat one day and air conditioning the next. It needs to be a turnover of the system. Um, and so now we are officially on heat mode now and should be hopefully comfortable throughout the winter. Um, so that's where we are there. Um, in terms of the windows in the fitness center, we talked about them looking at putting a UV coating on those. That would help keep that room a little bit cooler in the summer. Um, that Plans will move forward with that, but it also is going to be a timing issue because some of the windows in the fitness center are due to be replaced. Um, so as you know, they are replacing windows throughout the building. So obviously they won't, that UV filter won't be put on it until those windows are replaced. Um, so there'll be a little bit of a timing thing, but that, that will happen as they're replaced. Um, the UV filter, or not filter, yeah, UV filter will go on. It's not a, not a tint, but it will help cut out some of the UV rays and hopefully keep that room at a little bit more comfortable temperature in the summer. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, window replacements, again, that's an ongoing project. Um, and then also no additional updates on the furniture. We're still expecting the furniture to begin with that wonderful pinpoint estimate of sometime in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're still going to go with that wide window of sometime in the winter it'll be here. But that's where we're at with that. <laughs> Uh, Tim, yes. On the on the window replacement, is that going to proceed through the winter, or is it going to stop in late fall and resume in springtime? I haven't yet gotten a, a schedule from Central Services. I know they are kind of doing them a group at a time and kind of pinpointing what where the most urgent need is. And the next window windows to get replaced are in the great room, but I have not gotten a schedule from them yet. So I will let you know that uh, when I know. All right, so programs and services, just wanted to talk a little bit about that. And so much, you know, so much of what we do in building relationships um, is, it can be hard to measure. So I wanted to give some measurable stats <laughs> to kind of wrap our mind around some things today. And so August, for the month of August, uh, our team did a total of 65 orientations with individuals here. 26 of them were new members to the Senior Center, and 39 of them were people who have been uh, part of the Senior Center in the past but have not been here recently. So huge kudos to Lara and Cassie who are welcoming people as they come in, and I think 65 orientations over the course of the month is fabulous. Um, so wanted to share that number with you. Also, we talked about the bistro last month and kind of the bistro experience. Three month of numbers for you. Um, in July, we served 339 meals. In August, we served 355 meals. And in September, we served 374 meals. And Laura, you're probably feverishly writing these down. I can send them to you. <laughs> um, but that's some, just uh, again, I think that kind of shows how, how we're continuing to grow from month to month in terms of people in the building. One other thing is um, our senior center, my senior center um, software program tracks a lot of data for us. And one of the things it tracks is the number of people that are in the building. Um, and, and not only in the building, but people that swipe in, but also people that have registered online and, and are participating in an online way. And it gives us a total number, and then it gives what's called a, um, a duplicated number, and then an unduplicated number. So, if I sign into three things, that shows all three things, but then shows me as one person signing in. So we get both of those numbers. So when you look across those three months, and you look at the unduplicated, so it might mean I signed in three times, might mean I signed in once a day. This is what the numbers look like. Um, for July, we had 424. 
For August, we had 480, and for September, we had 545. Yeah, cool. So, again, great direction of those numbers um, in terms of people being in the building. And those numbers also represent, um, as well as the bistro numbers, also represent the people that are, that are participating in more of a ro remote way. So it might be the hybrid, or it might be the curbside pickup. Um, so that's going to that's gonna show us who's been in the building, but not only who's been in the building and who's been remote as well. And so, again, a great uh, great effort for the team. Great great news to report that we're continuing to see those numbers go up. So um, probably the biggest day, just to point in, in September, um, on September 20th, we had the Massachusetts Bar Association Elder Law Program here, and we had a local attorney, Valerie Vigneault, she did a presentation on state of, uh, on estate planning. Uh, that day, we had that day alone, we had 176 people swipe in um, on my senior center in the building, um, and then we also had multiple guests that were in that day. So that day probably saw close to 190, maybe even pushing 200 people in the building. So um, I think exciting news to share. Um, there, there still is a lot of anxiety, certainly, around COVID, and, and so we still are seeing people that prefer not to be back at the moment, but also tells a story that people are coming back um, and, are, and are participating either through the building or through hybrid options or curbside options. Um, so I wanted to share those numbers with you because we're excited about that and certainly seeing more people in the building and interacting with more people. Yes. So usually I swipe in for these meetings because, just to remind the members, we can swipe in, go to volunteers, go to the board member, and put in how much time so that we're, you know, we're being counted as volunteers. So um, since it's not on tonight, um, if we continue yes. with the meetings at this time, could it be on? Yeah, yeah we totally can. Thank you. <laughs> yes, and that's exactly, we certainly do encourage people to, to swipe in if they're volunteering, swipe in if they're attending an event. Mm -hmm. Um, it really is a two-step process for people attending, is one is we ask them to swipe in and that shows, but if they can also say what they, they're coming to that day, that's helpful for us as well. I didn't know whether Val knew that you go but to volunteer yeah, and then we can volunteer can totally there's a, a, an icon you hit on that says board, board okay. member or something, and then Great. I get it. Yeah, so we, all, all the, you're volunteering the time. So. Okay. And we shut those computers down at the end of the day, we'll make sure to leave them on for the meeting. <laughs> So we can certainly do that next time. Uh, we do have a couple other uh, new things coming back. We have the author of the month. I think I mentioned that last month. Um, we have Rebecca Daniels uh, on October 18th. We do have, have Ellen Mirapol on November 29th. Hope I said that correctly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we do have those two folks lined up. Uh, Cornhole is gaining some traction for us. Uh, we have that set up in the activity room. Uh, that's on Wednesdays at 1030. Um, also throughout October, my glasses are falling. <laughs> also throughout October, uh, we have lunch and learn series, and so that is happening over uh, lunches on Friday. And on Friday, the 14th, the one to point out, um, I'll highlight one of the four that are happening. Um, Robin Putnam, uh, the events and events and outreach manager from the Office of Consumer Affairs and Business Regulation is presenting on credit card skimming devices. Mm -hmm. So devices that are currently found on like gas stations or ATMs. So she's gonna share information regarding those and what, uh, what consumers need to be mindful of around that. So that should be a good, uh, good presentation. And the other Fridays are also different presentations throughout the month. Um, mentioned the Veterans Day last, uh, last time we met. And so that Veterans Day, just again to confirm that's Thursday, November 10th at 12 o'clock. And we are asking people to sign up for that ahead of time. So that just gives you, again, just a little uh, little overview of, of the programs and services that we're offering as well as the people we're seeing in the building or at the curbside picking up lunch or in a virtual setting. Um, continuing to move forward with collaborations, uh, the Northampton Fire Department is a place that we are, are beginning some collaborations with. Um, the first thing on the calendar is November 15th at 10 o'clock. We have a health and wellness clinic. Um, they are going to do blood pressures, uh, sync, things like that, but they also are permit, permit, excuse me, they are sharing information on the file of life, most forms. Uh, they also have a bunch of information around home safety, uh, so they'll be presenting that. Uh, and it, I would uh, anticipate at this time that at the very least, we'll have quarterly, uh, quarterly things that we're planning with them. So whether it be something with fire, 
fire safety or the health overall, wellness overall, um, that will continue to be a collaboration with them in an ongoing way. Um, Department of Health and Human Services are a huge partner to us right now, um, especially in the midst of, of the pandemic. Uh, we are pretty much in constant communication with them. Um, two things to point out. Number one is they have a flu clinic here on October 20th. People are being asked to sign up for appointments. My understanding are those appointments are booked. We're trying to uh, look at, at, at what the walk-in options are. Uh, but they will be here on this oh, December. Wow, I'm rushing things. October 20th from 8 to 11. Also, what I'm really excited about is that one of our public health nurses, uh, Elliot Escura, I may have not pronounced Elliot's last name correctly, so I apologize. Um, Elliot is going to have drop in hours here at the senior center, and that's going to happen Fridays at 12 30. 12.30 to 2.30, a two-hour block of time. That's going to include most Fridays. I know there's one Friday in November that Elliot can't be here, but I think that's a, a wonderful opportunity for people to um, be in contact with the Department of Health and Human Services to ask questions that they may have regarding COVID or any other health concerns at all. So that will be ongoing on Fridays for that two-hour block of time. So would that be like their personal health or just public health? I think some of that's kind of yet to be determined. I think uh -huh. this is kind of a new, mm -hmm. I, I think this has happened in the past, in the distant past, oh, yeah. um, but I think it, we'll see. I, the, the goal is to answer questions. So we're, pro we're providing the space in the wellness center so that it can be a confidential conversation. Mm -hmm. So it certainly could be something on a personal basis or gen more general questions. And I think as, as they begin to see some of the questions they're getting, we might be able to refine that a bit, but. Yeah, I mean, it would be, I guess, a, you could define the need after a week or two mm -hmm. based on what people are bringing in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we are, um, yeah, we're excited about that partnership as well. Um, Northampton neighbors, thank you to everybody who participated in the Doozy Do Parade. We had some fun. <laughs> We had some fun and even had a Ghostbuster there, which was awesome. But everybody came, um, everybody that was there was very festive. It was, it, it was fun. So thank you for everybody that participated and certainly our ongoing partnership. Uh, that Doozy Do Parade just was just one of the, the many things we'll continue to partner with Northampton neighbors. Uh, also, the Downtown North, Northampton Association, again, Arts Night Out, we talked about that before. Um, we do have the artist uh, showing tomorrow evening here from 7 to 9. Carolyn um, Hicks. Carolyn Hicks, so we're anticipating a big crowd. Um, we talked about scheduling. At this point, the best I understand that, we're in the schedule as long as the artist wants to be on the schedule. Um, we also talked a little bit about, I mean, at the moment, food is available through Kevin. Uh, we are not on the docket in terms of any alcohol at this point, um, and so that's where we stand at the moment. I know that was a question from last time. Um, and then just a couple other things. So this is probably some updates on what would be considered old business on our, uh, since this was in my update last month. Uh, in terms of coffee, kind of coffee with me opportunities, we've got a few more of those coming up. October 24th, November 7th, and November 16th. A couple updates, uh, again, along the lines here of old business, the phones. The phones have been a pain point for, uh, for our, not only uh, people that are calling in, but our, our team members as well. Um, I am happy to say that that is resolved. <laughs> um, what was automatically a voicemail, automatically you weren't getting anybody, you called in and you had seven options to choose from, now is being answered by Lara and Cassie directly in the building. Woo hoo! <laughs> Shout out for that. Um, in, in the unlikely event that they're not able to answer the phone, the options are, are literally number one, press one to make a bistro <laughs> reservation, press number two for transportation, press number three for social services, and everyone else leave a message and we'll call you back as soon as we can. So we feel like it's a much simpler Keeps it straightforward. Um, you don't need to, to, you know, to get lost in, in multiple options. And I think even more importantly is the fact that we have somebody answering the phone. It's ringing in the building, mm -hmm. um, and so we're thrilled about that. So that, thankfully, I think we're in a good, good, good spot with. Yeah. 
Uh, the other thing that we talked about was paperwork. We've also have heard from people coming in that the paperwork has been really, really cumbersome. We have things narrowed down now to uh, one, we do have a release form, as you probably know, that we ask people to sign when they come in. Um, that, uh, that is one form for that. The other thing that we are able to eliminate, it's not needed at this point, um, is the packet of information, health information, around fitness classes and using the fitness center. Um, that was a pretty cumbersome process to get those filled out by doctors and get sign off. Um, that uh, in working with city, the city, uh, that is something at this point that we um, we we will not not collect. So that will make that packet a little bit more manageable as well. Uh, so that's a little bit of update on that. Um, at the moment, we are still going to require fitness orientations for people coming in that are new to the fitness center or for people that haven't been here for a while. Um, so that is still in place at the moment. If that changes, I'll let you know. Um, but at that point, that, that we're kind of making, making some steps in terms of reducing the amount of paperwork that people are doing um, when they come. So you don't need a doctor to sign those forms anymore, or you do? We do not. You do, do not. not? It's not a requirement. Not, it's not a requirement. Okay. Not a requirement. Hey, you know, I mean, if you go take a yoga class from the city, they don't make you do that. Mm -hmm. so like, mm -hmm. But using the gym, you don't need to do that. You don't have to do that at the Y. Right. You know? But you do have to have orientation to the machinery. And mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. So, anyway, so that's, that's where we're at. The other thing, too, is we talked last month about the code of conduct um, and a little bit of, about the history of that. Um, uh, you know, the code of conduct is probably something at some point we want to review again, but for now, the immediate change uh, that we made was we are not requiring people to sign it. Um, that we were asking people, it was uploaded into my senior center, so it's part of the orientation process that required a signature. Um, we also had it posted around the building, so the, the changes that, that were made is not in the document itself. Um, we are still hoping to create a community where everybody's welcome and respected, and that's what that document <laughs> set out to do. Exactly. Um, but we are not asking people to sign it, and it is also no longer posted in every room in the building. It's posted at the kiosk, and people will also get a copy of it as they join um, and you know do their membership and update paperwork. So I, I certainly don't want to downplay the importance of it. <laughs> Um, I certainly want to highlight the importance of being a community together and being respectful and being a place where everybody's welcome. Uh, but the feedback we were getting is, is that the signing of it just felt a little much. Um, and so we'll still honor it um, and refer to it as we need to. Um, but that, that's the update on that. Um, just two other things real quickly. Number one is we still, at this point, are not renting out the building, uh, but there's sort of a gradual reopening with that. Um, Arts Night Out was one example we gave. The one other example at this point, two, I'm sorry, two other examples uh, that we're going to be open for is the Winter's Farmer's Market. The Winter Market uh, will happen here. And that's about nine Saturdays. Um, it's an every other Saturday rotation. Um, and then also first night out. We will be on the first night out is all going to be in person now uh, this coming year again, thankfully, and we'll be a venue for first night out. So for right now, those three city initiatives are the ones that, um, that we're able to accommodate in the building after our business hours. Uh, and we'll expand that as we can. Uh, but that, again, with those being city initiatives, they, we want to be supportive to the city and residents of the city. And lastly, um, we're looking at, uh, right now, some capital improvement um, programs. So if anybody has any feedback on capital improvement, we're in this marvelous stage of brainstorming all the wonderful things that we could do. Um, so if there's any suggestions anybody has uh, around capital improvement, certainly we'd be open to hearing those. And I think that about covers everything, including a few things in there, Bob, from, for old business from last time. Could you, could you I, uh, when you say capital improvement, what does it mean? <laughs> so capital improvement, I'm, and this is my first time going through it as well, so I'm trying to understand the whole process, but it's essentially a five-year plan, and it's looking at kind of what are the larger item, larger ticket items that we could potentially ask for funding from the city for. Um, I, 
if you know if we really wanted to dream, I, I would tell you, you know, Nancy and I were standing on Con Street looking at this little grass plot over here thinking, oh, let's put a door through the coffee shop and make a patio. <laughs> so <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> Um, so some of those larger items, I mean, some of it, uh, we, we have some, some things we put together as a team as well around technology, you know, some of the, what might be some larger ticket items that aren't going to fall in the traditional city budget or might be beyond what the Friends of Northampton <coughs> can contribute to as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if there's any larger, kind of larger ticket items that anybody's thinking or a little bit larger improvement items that we know. The city has a budget for that, and different departments come through and lobby never improvement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I have to sell it. getting painted? Is that capital improvement? Yeah, that probably is. And that certainly has been on my list, is going around and looking at some of the spaces. I, it, certainly there is some fresh paint on some walls, but not all of them. As we all sit there and go like this, this room needs it. <laughs> I think picture molding in a lot of places yeah. would be great. Yeah, but I think yeah. I talked about that. Yeah. Just to make that, make it an option, you know? Because yeah. it's pretty inexpensive if they, by, by some chance, are painting anyway. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, I do have one question of old business about uh, increasing the membership on the, on the committee. Yes. I know, I know Cindy's attending the session that talks about uh, obstacles to people joining uh, different organizations or groups within the city, and I don't know if that if we're part of that discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the at least my understanding in the the short time that I've been here so far is I, I mean I think moving the meeting to five o'clock was one of the ways that we were thinking would would make this a, a possibility for a wider group of, of people. Um, you know, so, so that if you have commitments during the day, that hopefully a five o'clock time slot makes this a little bit uh, more doable. Um, I, I think too, and I would certainly be interested to know thoughts from the group here, is, is also uh, wanting to kind of look at some of the ways that we can be involved um, so that we're not just recruiting somebody for the Council on Aging, but we're recruiting knowing a handful of goals that we're working on and kind of, you know, so that people have an idea on, on some of that, very similar to, keep pointing to Gene, but Gene helping with the art and the art program. So if we had a couple different programs where we knew we were I think we should stepping have, somebody, people into. I think we should have a, a committee or a group or whatever that is, takes care of the flowers, the plants, mm. does planting. You know, even if it, you know, in the spring, I mean, it's a little late now, but in the spring, even to like have like people share People will be splitting their their plants and stuff. You know, I mean, if somebody coordinated that and had a, a, an overview of what they would like and, and had a committee of people who could help with weeding, mm -hmm. I it just it's something that I think. Mm -hmm. So we should look for somebody that's in landscaping. <laughs> there you go, a landscaper. Well, a landscaper or, bit or business. Well, there are master gardeners. That um, there are people around who are master gardeners. They go through a training, and so it's not that they did it professionally, but there are people with big passions for gardening and um, a wealth of information. And there are even garden groups around, you know. Um, so I don't, th I don't think it would have to be somebody who had a degree necessarily, but. Um, we might we might be able to find somebody like a landscape architect to consult, you know, with and, and make a bigger plan. But then after that, um, it, there isn't it isn't that big of a job around here. It really has to do with like it has more to do with attending to like weeding, <laughs> you know, putting making a plan constructing putting stuff in and then attending to it, watering it and weeding it. And, Feeding it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe it could be something to tap into some young people. Because I love gardening, but I, I was devastated yesterday after putting three hours into my own garden. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that older people are really into, I'm into hiring somebody <laughs> now. But, um, but I have a very vibrant group in Northampton, neighbors of um, people who are gardeners. So um, 
you know, they might even be people to start with, you know, to see if they wanted to um, also, you know, talk. Maybe it may be that many of them are already members here. Well, and I also think, Bob, too, I, I think some of it also, too, is I, I think we will benefit by the more diversity we have sitting around this table. I also think we benefit from that, too. Um, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I, I think we. Yeah, once they get a plan, Jerry, they could yeah. you know, bring in their son and their grandsons or something. <laughs> but I think we talked in terms of um, maybe defining the role of members. Yeah you know, a little bit better so people can have a better understanding of kind of what's involved and, you know. <clears throat> so maybe what we, maybe what we need to do is on the, for the meeting next month, as have an agenda item of, of what, are, what are the role of the COA yeah. members and have, have a conversation around that. Um, does that kind of address your question, Bob? Yes. Okay. Okay. You know, it also could be the steps necessary to even apply to be a uh, board member. Yes. Okay. Which can can seem to be uh, a little complicated. Okay. Do you have, uh, you have to live in Northampton, don't you? To be a member of the Carmel on Aging Injury, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. It's appointed by the mayor. Right, right. right. I thought it was, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. So we'll put that on the agenda for next month, is the role of the members and the steps to becoming okay. a member. Maybe if we so. just reach, reached out to the mayor and said to her, do you know people that want to, you know, we've got a new mayor, maybe she knows people that would want to be on the, on the council, too. Mm -hmm. or, she, or she would want them to be on the council. <laughs> Well, we put, we put it in the Chronicle, or did we yet, that we were looking for? I don't think we have, but that certainly would be a place that we can, uh, I mean, I probably, again, would be worth it to get a little bit more clarity around the role, yeah. um, a little bit more clarity around the direction. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, certainly the Chronicle would be a great place to put an article in regarding that. Yeah, and, that, and if someone was interested in writers and could take that over, you know, mm -hmm. coordinate that kind of, even the movie thing. Didn't, who, 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 I think at some point there was somebody who helped to coordinate which movies were. Yes, there's a movie committee. And, and, that's happening. Hmm. and Bruce is on that committee. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, there's a movie committee. Yeah. So if you have any suggestions about movies, Okay. One thing I would suggest in addition to those is somebody who could really focus on getting lots of interesting and diverse kinds of musical events. Uh, they tend to be, they have been in the past, very attractive and, uh, you know, there hasn't been a single uh, committee or individual who's been looking for and signing up, Oops, but I think if we had a couple, three people who were interested in doing that, it would be a wonderful addition to uh, the events and programs at the center. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm going to ask Lily because my bride is showing that. Have a good evening, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. Bye bye. Thanks for coming. Thank bye -bye. you. Thank you. So for hearing me. Have a good night. You too. So, uh, any if there's any more old business, or we oh, move on to new know, business? Can I say? Um, I I think that I I also about I just wanted to go back to the last thing. I think that um, somebody from the synagogue maybe. Um, you know, I thought that might be a, a nice a nice place to to also look for um, new board members. We had at one point, you know, do you remember Deb was on? And I felt like sometimes, sometimes you can stomp on like religious holidays and stuff um, or not be able to like see a bigger picture of how it affects other parts of the community. And so having, having people who um, 
are deeply rooted in, you know, in, for instance, in the, in the Jewish community, which is pretty big, we have a pretty big Jewish community here. I thought that might be another place to um, consider looking for somebody. So do we have any new business, or do you think uh, we've already covered both old and new? No, I, I think that the only thing that I, I would mention under new business, um, and kind of was the last bullet point here for updates from me, is, is one of the things that, um, that I am currently looking into um, is a notification system. Um, we have, when we need to uh, do calls or notifications to people that are part, of, are part of the senior center, the system that we're currently using is a robocall feature through my senior center. Um, and that robocall feature, um, unfortunately, um, fortunately we have that capability. Unfortunately, the number comes currently from a 617 phone, uh, phone number. So anything that we send out, unfortunately, rather than looking like it's coming from the city or looking that it's like it's coming from the senior center, um, even though it, it comes from the senior center and is directly coming from us, um, usually myself, sometimes Cassie or Laura, if it's about class cancellation uh, or change in a class schedule, um, but it, it comes from a 617 number. So the complications, uh, there's some pretty obvious complications around that. Is one is it, it would be much better if it was coming from a local number. Um, the second thing that uh, also is a, a rub in the process is that uh, what I'm learning um, in this is that the major phone carriers also have programs built into their systems to catch spam. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. very similar to our emails. So, you know, like you go and you use Gmail yeah. and right. they automatically throw things into spam without it even being seen. And, and so what I'm learning is it, from, from, uh, from my senior center is that the phone companies are the same way. And so if we have a message that we want to send to 100 people, chances are that may end up in somebody's spam. So I think between coming from a 617 area code um, to also the possibility of because there's a bulk number of calls coming out from one phone number at the same time, um, it's not necessarily getting through to everybody. Um, so I'm just mentioning that because, I mean, hopefully there won't be a lot of occasions when we need to be sending out notifications, but if we do, that's where we are at the moment. Um, so I'm looking at a couple different things. One is to see if there's options for us to have that come from a local number. Um, regardless of what number it comes from, though, we still are going to have to work through an issue of it potentially being marked as spam. So it's not marked as spam because the number it originates from. My understand, uh, At least that's my understanding. My understanding is it's marked from spam because of the number of calls that are happening from that number at the same time. Uh -huh. And so, anyway, it, I'm just mentioning it to say that it, it's, it, it is, it is uh, uh, again, when I look at where I'm getting feedback, I'm getting mm -hmm. feedback that coming from the 617 number is not helpful. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, that is what we have at the moment, but I am trying to look at other options that will either bring it from a local number um, I have also talked with the city dispatch as well to see if there's an opportunity to do that through the same system that the city uses for dispatching. Mm -hmm. So just know that I'm looking at some options if you're hearing feedback on, on, on where those notifications are coming from. And hopefully we will be able to improve on that as well. But just to bring that up, that's, that's kind of where we're sitting with this at the moment. Um, and hopefully we'll get that resolved. But either way, we still need to look at is the, are things potentially going into the spam because of the, the, the number of calls coming from a one number at the same time. So that's just an update on that. Um, uh, hopefully we'll be able to give you a little bit more further update uh, at the next meeting, but um, that's what I'm working on at the moment. Now, uh, Kim, uh, when the city calls, you see the ECN number and you know it's from the city. There's no caller ID that would show up for the senior center. I, I don't, I'm not, yes, so I, to use the city system, it would probably come from that same, that same thing, and, and some of this, Bob, I, I still need to do research on, so I, I do want to say that I'm not entirely 100% sure, um, but my understanding is that, that if, through my senior center, there's a chance that we could get it to come through a local number, and that may be the senior center number, but we still would have an option, there still may be an option, or not an option, there still may be an issue with numbers being blocked or the call being blocked as spam. Right. 
Because if we had 100 people we wanted to send that message to, that's going to get picked up by some phone carriers as to why is this phone number sending 100 messages out at the same time, and it's going to just automatically call into spam. There, I believe there also, and this is what I'm trying to get more information on, is there maybe some steps that we can take with each of those phone carriers to, in a, in a sense, sort of register the number, mm. and, and then that way it will, won't fall into spam? Um, but yes, I mean, ultimately, if we could get something that was very clear that it was coming from the senior center, that would obviously be the best option. Um, but I, I don't know how clear that would still be, Bob, even if it's a local number. Yeah. yeah. What happened, there was also, there was a call that went out to just a small, a, a number of people because there was a COVID exposure, but um, it was only, the call only went out to the people who were there during the time when the person who called and said they had COVID were there. And on one of the listservs that I'm on, there was a whole bunch of like confusion and chatter about like, why didn't this, why didn't I get it if you got it? And is this, and this number was a 617 number. It, was this just somebody like, what, what, is this real? You know, like that kind of thing. So, um, so um, it, it got a, a group of people upset, <laughs> you know, for whatever reason. And, and, and it also, diminish the value of the message they received because they weren't sure whether it was a real message or not. And that's the challenge, I think, with it coming from 617. If it's coming from 617, um, it, it does then sort of feel not local. <laughs> right. It does feel not local. <laughs> so, so just, yeah, so just know that uh, if you're hearing feedback on that, that we are working on that. Um, and I don't know if anybody has any other questions around that this evening that I can answer, but just know that that we're working on it. So that's not every call that, that is made from here. It's just the robo ones that you need to reach a bunch of people with. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because we're just talking about, yeah, we're just talking about yeah. any number of bulk calls that go yeah. out. And I think the more people included in the call list, the greater chance it's going to be marked as spam is my understanding. Um, but yeah, any other calls, though, if I pick up the phone in my office and call out, yeah, it indeed. shows up where, yeah, where I'm calling from. Yeah, you would see that. Bob, were you going to say something? Yes. Uh, there was one thing of old business. Uh, somebody had asked about uh, an emergency toll box or something in the uh, fitness center to notify oh, yes. the front desk of an emergency. Yes. Now, I know the bathrooms have a toll chain to notify of an emergency that would happen in, in any of the restaurants. But I don't know if that system is amenable to being also connected up to the fitness center. Yes, I, I'm working on that now in terms of um, a, a couple different notifications throughout the building. Um, the one thing, just to, to be up to update on that as well, is that there is a phone in the fitness center. I know, obviously, that means you need to get to the phone, so I, I certainly understand that. But there is a phone there that where you are able to make out, outgoing calls, or it can also call 1228, which Laura or Cassie will answer. But yeah, there's a, I, I will have some more information on the plausibility of that um, at the next meeting, Bob, working on it. Okay. So, uh, any other business? There being no further business, I move to be adjourned. Second. All right. So moved. Everybody in favor? Yes. Yes. Okay. Meeting is adjourned. All right. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>